Hello there, I'm Sean Grizzly and welcome to the fourth tutorial in the C++ collection. Today we'll be looking at while loops. As you can see I have done one quickly. Most of the syntax we have already picked up in the first three tutorials. I'll just take you over a few brief things here. Okay, so this example we're asking the user for a value between 1 and 10. If the user doesn't enter the value between 1 and 10, the while loop will repeatedly ask for that value between 1 and 10 until a valid value between that range has been entered. When the value has been entered, it will say thank you for entering the number and it will type the number and end the line. OK, then let's look at a few little pointers here. As you can see, we've declared the value valid number and we've inputted it here. If we accidentally forgot the casing, you see that is not the same variable, this is two different variables. This shows that casing does matter in C++ and it's good coding practice to write variables which mean something but in some cases they might be pretty long so to get, make sure you don't slip up on the casing it might be an idea to copy them into there so you've got your n and your v okay now we've done that we'll look a little bit at lo logic gates which i did say i would discuss in this tutorial okay these two um characters here um are the value for or that's o r this means that while the valid number, this is the variable we've initialized an input, so valid number will hold the value the user has put into the program. So while the valid number is less than 1 or it's more than 10. So if they put negatives or 0 or if they've put more than 10, then we want to tell them something like, I did say between 1 and 10 you know, then we'll ask them for a number again. So it's going to repeat these two statements every time the while loop is run. But if the user puts a value, say 3, it's not less than 1, it's not more than 10. So it will go on to here, and thanks for entering the number 3, exclamation mark. OK, then this last line may seem like a little bit of a mouthful, but if you just look at it closely, you've got your left arrows, you've got a string, split it off with another double left arrow, you've got the variable which the user put into the system, this will always contain that value unless you change it, exclamation mark, another double thing, and your end line. So in theory, when we run the program here, it will say, hello, can you give me a number between 1 and 10? We've got 88. I did say between 1 and 10, you know. Okay, we've put negative 9. And it's just going to keep doing that until we put in a valid value, say 3. Thanks for entering the number 3. Okay, so as you can see, it does work how we would like it to, but it doesn't have full val validation. I'll show you why. Can you give me a, a number between 1 and 10? If we put a letter G, look what happens <laughs> if you've had previous program experience you might have noticed things like this before and often cause your computer to crash as you can see I've crossed it off nothing's happening and hopefully there we go and now I was lucky I've got a later version of win the Windows operating system which allows me to end the program without crashing the whole computer so I was lucky there but it's just a warning that when you use while loops and for loops anything which can repeat and lead to an indefinite amount of statements then save your work beforehand so if you ever type while or for in your program before you press this red button just file and save so you don't lose any work I'll tell you why that error occurred. I'm typing in characters or strings as you might say. And you can see it's crashing here. The reason for that being is that we have defined valid number as an integer. Integers obviously hold the value between minus 32,000. It's something like minus 32,000. Something like that between 32 and the same number again. 
I can't give you a definite answer on these three, but it's between this range here. So obviously if the user enters 60,000, we're going to get some kind of other error as well. If we put long, that will hold a bigger value. If we put unsigned long, that will hold an even bigger value. The unsigned piece here means that we are the compiler is not making use of the extra bit at the start. So integer it holds an X amount of bits plus one more which the compiler allows which will be the negative or the positive symbol. If we unsign the negative or positive symbol uh, which precedes our number, it gives us one extra digit to place another uh, number in. So if we put unsigned, it gives us that one extra bit to hold more data into our variable. I hope that's a clear definition. It's one of those things you can't explain properly, but you'll learn through time. Okay, so I think that's about everything. I'd just like to cover logic gates before we finish this tutorial. As you can see, this one is OR. You might be asking, what are they? Are they the letter L? No, they aren't. For um, UK users, users in the United Kingdom, there is a character to the right of your left shift key. You'll notice it's that one. It's also got the backslash on it. Hold shift and press that key and you'll get the that symbol there. Two of those means OR. So you can have valid number, it's less than 1 or it's more than 10, then you can do this here. The AND one, this resembles AND a bit more. Ampersand, look. Two ampersands, you know that in literary English that means AND. For C++, that means AND. So it's easier to remember than OR, but you kind of get the syntax. The last Boolean operator I want to discuss there is one more, but I wouldn't like to discuss that at the moment, which is not. You could say that you could define a variable as boolean. This is a variable that handles the values true or false. So you could say something is valid, define it as true. Then if you do an if statement, if it's not valid, So that's basically saying if it's not valid, so if valid holds the value of false, because when it's not true, it's going to be false. So if it's not true, you know, it's going to be false here. So that's the advantages of not here. It can change around whole statements, that's a good advantage. If I put not here, like so, then it would reverse this whole statement, if you get what I mean. So instead of valid number between less than 1 and more than 10, it will look for the reverse of this statement. So it will say if it's valid instead of not valid. That are the values of not. So we've looked at all, we've looked at and, and we've looked at not. There are three most common logic gates within C++. I have no idea why they call them logic gates, but just think of them as little operators that you can use and as you gain more knowledge learn to use the proper names for different C++ functions so I'd like to quickly say where to use AND and where to use OR as you can see it might make perfect sense that you can use AND here well the valid number is less than 1 and it's more than 10 ok yeah you could say that but you could also say that and you get confused between which one is which you have to think logically about this a valid number is less than 1 or it's more than 10. So if they enter 3, is it less than 1? No, it's not. Or is it more than 10? If it's less than 1, it can't be over 10 as well, otherwise you'd use AND. When you'd use, you're use, you using AND, let's reverse this quickly. Remember that when doing more than and less than equal to, always put your equal sign to the right of the arrow. Okay. This is where to use AND. A valid number is more than equal to 1 
and it's less than or equal to 10, this is a range. Think 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's a solid range. It's not like negatives and 0 for the less than 1 and more than 10. It's not two separate values like ranges within the number system. This is one whole range so while it's more than equal to 1 and it's less than equal to 10 because that will work for number 3, it will work for number 4 etc. So that's where to use and and where to use or. So this concludes the tutorial of while loops and logic gates within C++. The next tutorial will look at four statements and how they are used within the environment. You've been listening to Sean Grizzly, tutorial 4. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.